humanity. The foundation has raised the eye of the South African Council of Churches as well, which has called on it to retract its statement for again questioning the atrocities of apartheid. Among those who's lent his voice to uh, the issue is renowned advocate Tembega Mugai Tobi. He said to Twitter to say the argument that not enough blacks were killed by apartheid government for apartheid to qualify as a crime against humanity should make us question the humanity of those who make such arguments. He joins us now on the line. A very good evening to you, advocate Mugai Tobi, and thank you so much for speaking to us. The South African Council of Churches at calling on the foundation to not only retract the statement but to apologize. Is that a sentiment that you would share? Yes, indeed. Um, the, uh, this is a form of denialism of apartheid. It is a, a form of indifference to black pain. So the South African Council of Churches is correct in asking them not only to retract but also to apologize. Of course, Many victims of apartheid, any apology or retraction will come as cold comfort because the foundations of apartheid still permeate black lives in South Africa. Mm. But the very least that can be done for such an offensive denial is an apology and a retraction. Mm. As you say, it's still part of the everyday life of uh, South Africans, especially those previously disadvantaged. Why do you think, just in terms of timing, that, um, and it was very interesting that uh, the former president, F.W. Clark, made the statement pretty much uh, almost 30 years to the date that former president Nelson Mandela was released. Why would you reiterate that statement that apartheid is not a crime against humanity? Not only does he do that, so does the foundation. The position of the National Party from the very beginning has always been to deny that apartheid was a crime against humanity. South Africa, you would remember, was present at the General Assembly of 1973 where the convention was passed. It was one of the four uh, countries that opposed the resolution. And the resolution was supported by some 91 uh, countries with only about, I think, 20 abstentions. So the position of the National Party has always been to deny that apartheid was a crime against humanity from the 70s when the item first surfaced on the agenda of the United Nations. That position was always consistent during the era of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission when the issue of the complicity of the National Party and the issue of the personal complicity of the clerk was raised for deliberation a finding had been made implicating uh, uh, Mr. de Klerk, but there was an application that he then launched in court so that if you go today to the report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the allegations of de Klerk's in, uh, complicity in apartheid were, I mean, in the killings, were blacked out through a judicial order. And today's resurrection of the denial of apartheid as a crime against humanity is consistent with the old idea that the National Party has never accepted that what it did was morally, ethically, legally a crime against humanity. Mm. And, you know, there was a discussion that took place at the United General Assembly, which I was speaking to the SACC about, and they're just talking about the various articles especially around um, the crimes against humanity. What was interestingly raised is the fact that you will continue to have these legalistic arguments seeking to define what a crime against humanity is the very problem because uh, some people want to equate one crime to another or have a hierarchy of sorts. Do you think that is part of the problem? No, it is not part of the problem. You see, apartheid has always stood as a crime apart from other crimes. In 1963, the Security Council passed two resolutions condemning apartheid and calling upon the South African government to release people that were in prison. And 1963 is a pivotal moment in South Africa's history because this is the period of the Rivonia uh, trial. In 1966, the matter goes beyond the Security Council into the General Assembly. And 1963 is also important for another reason. The Declared Foundation disingenuously claims 
that the labeling of apartheid as a crime against humanity was a Soviet plot. And yet, at that meeting of the Security Council was present France, China, the United Kingdom, uh, America, and Russia, all of whom are permanent members of the Security Council. The UK and France did not oppose the resolution, although they uh, abstained. At the General Assembly meeting of 1966, virtually every state that was there where the item was first introduced that apartheid is not only morally questionable, but it is also a crime against humanity. And the same thing, the Security Council unanimously passed a resolution in 1984 after apartheid tried to reform itself by establishing a, a tricameral system. And it again condemned apartheid as a crime against humanity. So internationally speaking, the position has always been consistent that apartheid is a crime against humanity. That does not mean that all crimes against humanity are the same. The Holocaust was one other example of a crime against humanity. In Bosnia, Herzegovina, there were also other crimes against humanity. In, um, uh, in, in Congo, under the era of Leopold, 10 million Congolese were uh, genocided. In Namibia, um, when the Germans occupied Namibia, there was a genocide. So there are different forms of crimes against humanity, but they nevertheless retain the essential characteristics of criminal conduct on a systematic and a mass scale targeted at a specific group, whether it is race, whether it is gender, whether it is culture, whether it is language. So it is almost like murder. Some people are killed as a consequence of a shooting, others by drowning, others by strangulation. But nevertheless, they are still murdered. One does not say that murder by shooting is worse than murder by strangulation, because murder is murder is murder. The same applies to a crime against humanity. There are various forms in which the crime takes place, and apartheid has always stood as a crime apart from the other. Even the Rome Statute endorsed apartheid as a crime against humanity. Today, as we speak, the number of countries internationally that have endorsed the idea of apartheid as a crime against humanity exceeds 100. And so the denial is of a narrow sect within the South African context, which, of course, is accused of complicity in the crime. Now, you have the foundation saying, I quote, deplorable as it is, we cannot find from a legal point of view they emphasize uh, and accept that apartheid in this manner can be made a crime against humanity. But most importantly, it goes on to say crimes against humanity are so grave in nature that they must be meticulously elaborated and strictly construed under existing international law. Are they saying there are no articles that, uh, as you've just outlined, that actually... Uh, are in line with this? No. The convention itself outlined all of the elements of the crime of apartheid. As I say, it has always been a crime apart. The 1973 convention, which subsequently became uh, effective in 1976, it defined all of the elements of apartheid. The denial of people for, uh, in relation to land, the mass incarceration of uh, black people, the uh, uh, removal, forced removal under the Group Areas Act, the systematic torture of enemies and opponents of uh, apartheid, the mass incarceration, the murders. I mean, even the, the Clark Foundation, on its own numbers, accepts that more than 3,000 people were killed by the security forces. What they seem to be disputing is that the numbers were too low to qualify as a crime against humanity, as if they should have killed 3 million as if somehow they say we should have killed more. So this kind of, uh, uh, it's not even legalistic. Legally speaking, the crime against, uh, apartheid as a crime against humanity is well settled. There is not even a debate. What remains is a group of people that are hiding their head under the sand and denying what everybody knows. Now, is it because, and earlier on, as I repeat the conversation with the South African Council of Churches, they speak about the fact that the fact that nobody, uh, at least at that level, the fact that Mr. de Klerk himself received a Nobel Peace Prize 
nobody at the helm of the apartheid government actually faced censure or any criminal proceedings as a result of their presiding over a, a system that systematically targeted uh, black people in this country. Is that part of the problem? Why we'll continue to have uh, these uh, public policy contradictions on what apartheid was and wasn't? No, there are no public policy contradictions. There is only one small sect in the country that denies what every other right-thinking South African knows. And so we should not elevate the FW Declared Foundation to the level of ordinary, honest, uh, uh, truth-speaking South Africans, white or black or Indian or colored, accept that apartheid was a legal wrong committed against a group of people because... They simply did not have political power or economic power or military power. So that established declared foundation should not be elevated beyond what it actually mm -hmm. deserves. But on the other question, which is the question of justice, you must remember that even although apartheid was declared a crime against humanity, both at the Security Council and at the General Assembly level, the way one deals with crimes against humanity is not uniform. In the context of the Holocaust, the German generals faced a trial at Nuremberg, and those who were found guilty were sent to jail, and some of them were uh, essentially executed, and those who were found not guilty of course released. But in the South African context, what we had was the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, because each country is given autonomy to decide initially domestically how to deal with crimes against humanity. In the South African context, we chose the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Now, the element of the Truth Commission that was crucial was that you got amnesty if you testified truthfully. Now, most people did not testify truthfully. They did not get amnesty. But the National Prosecuting Authority never prosecuted them, even though the evidence was overwhelming and the cases were prosecuted. For years, there have been NGOs demanding that the National Prosecuting Authority should prosecute those people who either did not apply for amnesty or were denied amnesty where they had applied. So we, in fact, as a country, have ourselves to blame that the crimes against humanity committed under our party have still not been prosecuted. We do not have the international community to blame. It is our own National Prosecuting Authority's failure. When this matter arose a couple of years ago, an explanation was given by, I think, one of the senior leaders of the National Prosecuting Authority, that there had somehow been a government decision um, not to prosecute or government interference against the uh, prosecution. Some prosecutions are now taking place. Uh, the, 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 the case, actually, it was the, the case of Ahmed Timon, why it had not been prosecuted earlier, because the accused are now saying to the court that it's too late to prosecute. In that case, the evidence that was led showed that there had been executive interference in the decisions of the NPA to prosecute. So we should domesticate the problem and okay. own up to it. Thank you so much for your time. Advocate Tembega Nuga Itobi, his reaction on the FW, the Clark Foundation statement that they put out yesterday.